God, we thank you. We bless your name, God. You alone are worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you saw fit to keep us through the night, God, and woke us up this morning. Father, that we have breath in our bodies, strength in our bodies, Lord God. And Father, a mind to think, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus as you have your way during this time and service, God. We just, we want to glorify you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, let us not do anything, Lord God, that you have not ordained, Father. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus for, Lord God, those who are doing anything in this service on today, God. I thank you, Father, that you have given them that heart desire to worship you. Father, we worship you in the greeting, God. We worship you, Lord, on the instruments, God. We worship you, Lord God, as the ushers usher, Lord God. We worship you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as the singers begin to praise you, Lord God. We worship you, Lord God, through every part of this service. We thank you for the word of God that shall come, God. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for the man of God, Lord, shall deliver the word, Lord God, as you have instructed him, Lord God. Father, we thank you for every person in-house and online, God. We pray that their ears will be open to hear what thus saith the Lord. God, we just glorify you right now, God. Father, you are magnificent. You are amazing. Lord God, you are great, Lord God. You are awesome, Lord God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you are, Lord God, with words cannot describe, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Nothing is greater than you, Lord God. You are a good, 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 good Father, God. Hallelujah, Lord. And we glorify your name. And we lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, in this house on today, God. No rocks will cry out, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we will praise you, Lord God. We will praise you with you taking us through. We will praise you, Lord God, with your brother Trump. We will praise you, Lord God, with you have in store in the future. We will praise your name, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let every ear, Lord God, have an ear to hear. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let the love of Christ, Lord God, begin to permeate through this house, Lord, in the hearts of the people, Lord. Online, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to glorify you. We're going to lift you up, God. Because you're such an awesome God. None greater than you, Lord God. Hallelujah. None that shall ever be greater than you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. We ask God that you forgive us, Lord God, for those areas in our lives, Lord God. Those things we haven't submitted, God. Those things, Lord God, that we continue to go through, Lord God, that you called us out a long time ago. God, in the name of Jesus, let the word of God and everything, Lord God, that flows from our mouth be a blessing unto you, God. Oh, we lift you up, God. We praise your name. You are such an awesome God. Glorious God, hallelujah, and we give you praise. We give you honor, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We speak, Lord God, to the depressed, God, in the name of Jesus. Give them joy, God, in the name of Jesus. We speak, Lord God, to those, Lord, in the name of Jesus, who have addictions, God. Let them be free, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We speak, Lord, in the name of Jesus, those who are sick, God. Father, you already made provision that they get well, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you. We open our mouths and we give you praise. We glorify you, for there is none like you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now, God. Let this time, Lord God, be, Lord God, a, a way we can glorify you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Ah, help us to freely worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. To worship you, Lord God, without any restrictions, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. 
Yes, we made an agenda, God, for the day, God, but Father, you supersede that agenda, Lord God, so have your way. Father, if you want to rearrange everything, have your way, God, because it's not about us, but it's all about you, Father. And we thank you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we bless you, and we lift you up now, God. Jesus name we glorify something about the name Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Lord God when we say Jesus Lord God we say it from our hearts we say it from a place that we believe Lord God Father we know that things happen Lord in the name of Jesus things begin to break up Lord God in the name of Jesus things line up Lord according to you Lord God so Jesus we thank you
And if you know him for yourself, you just can't stop praising him. Because he's so great. He's so good. He's so wonderful. He's so awesome. He's so everything. Hallelujah. He's made a way for us. And he continues to make a way for us. Even as we deal in our battles on today, God is the way maker. He makes a way. Even in our struggles, even in our tough times, he made a way. He continues to make a way. Oh, 
for anybody out there. Yes. Made away. Is he making a way? You may. Even if he hasn't confessed that God is making a way, you made a way. He's made a way. You made a way. Come on.
Hallelujah. Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International, 40 years of history. Acknowledging the call and the commission of the Lord to establish a church in the Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti area in the summer of 1981, Pastor Robert A. Hill met with a small contingency of people whom he felt God had given him and shared God's vision for God's church. The vision of the church was to reflect its name, Christian Love Fellowship. As a result of that meeting, Pastor Hill and his loving wife, Barbara, their daughter, Ebony, and 12 adult supporters held their first worship service on August 2nd, 1981 at the International Student Activity Building on the University of Michigan campus. After about a month, the church moved to a more permanent facility in a storefront located at 1639 Stamford Boulevard in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The storefront was renovated twice to expand the facility. It was clear that the CLF Ministries to God's vision was prosperous. The membership had grown from 13 to approximately 75 people. It was at this time CLF elected to move to a larger facility rather than expand the building a third time. Through the faithful giving of the saints, in just two months, the funds were raised to move. CLF moved to 623 Oak Street in, in Ypsilanti in November of 1984. Considering the size of the membership, this was truly a miracle and a testimony of God's continued steadfastness as they strove to be obedient to his call. In 1992, the church embarked upon the Nehemiah Project which entailed the construction by the congregation of an addition to the Oak Street facility. This addition would house administrative offices and space for educational endeavors. The Nehemiah building housed the first phase of CLF's commitment to providing quality Christian education for the whole body of Christ and the committee. Genesis Preschool was started in 1994 under the direction of Cynthia Wallace and Karen Donnellan. By the fall of 1994, the enrollment had grown to 20 students and four staff. Genesis Christian Academy grew to serve preschool through fifth grade with an enrollment of up to 62 students and seven staff by September of 1996. Also, in November 1994, the prophetic word of the Lord came during a morning worship service for Sister Barbara Hill to take her place beside her husband in pastoring the CLF family. 
An open air celebration was held on August 27, 1995 to commemorate the groundbreaking for the CLF new site on Stanford. That day marked the beginning of the CLF move toward possessing the land God had given. The ministerial staff significantly increased in 1996 through the ordination of 13 people whom God had raised up among the congregation to be gifts to the local body. The Community Development Corporation named power, people, organized, working, evolving, reaching, was also formed. As, a, as the ministry celebrated its 15th year anniversary, phase one of a five-phase building project was constructed on Stamford Boulevard. This phase consisted of a large temporary sanctuary and or fellowship, administrative offices, church classrooms, and Genesis Christian Academy. Once again, God showed his faithfulness. With the leading of the Lord, Apostle Robert Hill assumed a larger role in the kingdom by providing guidance and covering over several churches of varied cultural backgrounds across the country. In February 2007, the current sanctuary was dedicated, preceded by a ceremonial blowing of the shofar, Apostle Hill and Pastor Barbara led the Levites, musicians, and members of Christian Love Fellowship into this glorious new sanctuary for an anointed dedication service. Family, friends, and representatives from the covered churches joined to celebrate what God had done. What a long way God had brought CLF from the humble days of the storefront back to the very land where our current edifice stands. The founding pastors of this ministry recognized that none of these accomplishments would have been possible without God's grace and the sincere dedication of his people, particularly those God so honored them to pastor. In September 2009, Christian Love, the Christian Love Fellowship Mass Choir ministered in song at the regionals for Verizon Wireless How Sweet the Sound and were recognized among 11 other choirs as ministering in excellence. Apostle Hill and other friends of CLF were present as the Spirit of the Lord descended upon the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. Apostle Hill's desire to provide an example of true worship was met. Apostle Hill championed and, and supported that all the arts be used in worship, liturgical dance, step, drama, reading, poetry. On October 2009, Pastor Robert A. Hill was confirmed as an apostle. At this confirmation, the 11 churches under him, as well as other parachurch ministries, such as Power and PAC, Pastors Alliance for County Transformation, were present to support him. In the winter of 2009, Apostle Robert invited the congregation to join in faith for his healing from cancer. Apostle Hill ministered throughout his chemotherapy and radiation treatment, missing only once due to a reaction to the treatment. The only other times he did not minister, minister from the CLF pulpit were when he was ministering elsewhere. On June 22, 2010, CLF MI suffered a tremendous loss with the passing of the founding and senior pastor, Apostle Robert A. Hill, Jr. 
Upon his death, Pastor Barbara Hill, who served as co-pastor, continued as senior pastor. Pastor Barbara and 11 pastors made up the pastoral council. The ministerial staff also included 21 ordained ministers, three non-ordained ministers, and five ministers in training. The apostolic covering over nine churches throughout the Midwest and Jamaica continues. Apostle and Pastor Barbara Hill have launched eight former CLF associate pastors into their own senior pastor position. In September 2011, the autobiography of Apostle Robert A. Hill, The Good Hand of the Lord, was released. Apostle Hill had finished this book, written in his own words by his own hand before he passed. Under the leadership of Pastor Barbara Hill, the CLF in my family and ministry continued to thrive keeping the momentum to grow and fulfill the vision given this ministry. Between 2014 and 2017, Pastor Barbara Hill and the Bishop Clifford and Pastor Ernestine Howard joined their ministries. The combined ministries continued to minister the word of God and create lasting relationships. Bishop and Pastor Howard are now ministering the word of God at Abiding Love Community Church International in Ypsilanti, Michigan. In 2016, the CLF Fellowship Hall became the Robert A. Hill Annex Building, where our founding pastor's memory and commitment to, to community is honored by utilizing the building for many community events and programs. Throughout the CLFMI growth process, Faith has carried us through as we sought to sustain the vision and purpose of this ministry, not only because of what Apostle Hill had done, but because of what God has called us to do. We recognize that God is working in all that we have encountered. Our faith is not weakened. Even in the loss of our beloved Apostle Hill, Indeed, it has made us stronger, more durable, and we are more intent than ever to see this vision out. In 2018, Pastor Harold Wimberly became the co-pastor of CLFMI. Pastor Wimberly and his wife, Pastor Angela Wimberly, served as youth pastors at CLFMI for 25 years, as well as members of the Pastoral Council. In September 2019, Pastor Barbara Hill retired as senior pastor of CLFMI. She celebrated with a grand retirement party. The CLF church family and many special gifts, guests recognized her years of commitment and labor during a September morning service. On September 28, 2019, Pastor Harold Wimberly started his call as senior pastor, along with his beautiful wife, First Lady, Pastor Angela Wimberly. The theme of the message was atmosphere shift. What a prophetic word that was, because little did any of us know that within six months, COVID-19 would blanket the world and the shift would start. Pastor Harold, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, led CLFMI through a transition from in-person Sunday service, Sunday school, and Wednesday noon and evening Bible study to 100% virtual online platforms that are in place today. Pastor Harold Wimberly Jr., heeding the Lord, 
ministers in two capacities as a bivocational pastor. Pastor Harold not only serves the needs of CLFMI full time, but also works for the Ann Arbor Public Schools as a full time intervention specialist counselor. In this work within the school district, the Lord uses Pastor Harold to support middle school students to navigate academically and socially emotionally through school. He works closely with their families, helping them as well handle child rearing, school, and life issues. Pastor Harold assists the teachers and staff by demonstrating examples of ways to address behavioral issues through building relationships with their students. Pastor Harold appears to work tirelessly to give his all to the needs and expectations of both vocations. Balancing these two challenges for two years has been amazing and another demonstration of the goodness and grace of God. Under the leadership of Pastor Harold during this COVID shift, the ministry was able to open up an emergency food pantry and monthly food distribution for families in need. Pastor Harold has led CLFMI in partnership with Hope America to give out over 2,500 new clothes and shoes, along with 425 bags of brand new toys in the last two years to over 300 families within the Washtenaw and Wayne counties. Pastor Harold has written and secured four grants totaling $32,000 between 2020 and 21 to teach middle school through high school students life skill classes along with running COVID assistance programming for adults, such as mental health small groups, health and wellness programs, and money management classes. Pastor Harrell also collaborated with Ypsilanti Community Schools, Washtenaw My Brother's Keeper, Mentor to Youth, and Washtenaw Community College in a three-year grant for $225,000 to support black youth and parents in the Ypsilanti Community School District. Pastor Harold has also partnered with the Ann Arbor Public Schools and Washtenaw Intermediate School to form a high school completion and GED program to serve young adults at the CLF facility. Pastors Harold and Angela Wimberly hold that without the Lord Jesus Christ, the foundation that was laid before them, their faithful CLF in my family members and community partners, none of this could even be possible. Pastors Harold and Angela are forever grateful and stand on the scripture that the Lord laid upon their hearts as they were called to this journey. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. Jeremiah 31, 8. I didn't say give me a hand clap. I said let's give the Lord a hand clap. 40 wonderful years, 40 years, 40 years of striving, one man's vision, being obedient to the call of the Lord, thousands of people being saved, and the church is still moving forward. Pastor Barbara taking it into a whole nother level. Now we have the Wimberleys taking us to even a further level. Because when God is involved, you will have growth. You will have development. You will have change. Because God is moving in this place. Give the Lord another hand clap. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
no weapon, no weapon can harm me.
just the voices. God in this house on today. If you have breath in your body, strength in your legs, I want you to get up on your feet and give God glory. Give him praise. Glorify his holy name. For he is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Oh God, we glorify you. We lift up the name of Jesus. We celebrate the name his name, praise his holy name, for he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be lifted up. He is worthy to be glorified. He is worthy to be honored. For he is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. It becomes an honor to introduce the man and the woman of God who are my dear, dear friends. Dr. Pastor. John Wallace, Dr. Pastor Cynthia Wallace, and the entire Wallace family. Come on. Dr. Wallace, a native of Pittsburgh, PA, is a bivocational pastor, which means he holds more than one job whose ministry models the integ integration of faith, integration, I'm sorry, of faith and work. Dr. Wallace is the senior pastor of Bible Center Church located in Pittsburgh, Homewood neighborhood. He also serves as the vice provost for faculty diversity and development at the University of Pittsburgh, where he holds the David E. Epperson Endowed Chair he is the interim director at the Center on Race and Social Problems and has appointments in the School of Social Work, the Katz Graduate School of Business, and the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Wallace integrates his faith and work through the ministries of Bible Center Church and through his research, teaching, and service at Pitt. 
At Bible Center, he is the founder of the Oasis Project, the Community and Economic Development Division of the church. The o Oasis Project community-focused activities include the Makers Clubhouse STEM program, which is science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and math. And management, every, shorter, and also in management. Leave. The Everyday Cafe owned our own entrepreneurship academy and Oasis Community Kitchen, a culinary business incubator and training facility. In addition to being a pastor and professor, Dr. Wallace is a husband and a father. He has been married to his wife, Dr. Cynthia M. Wallace, the executive pastor and executive director of the Oasis Project for more than 34 years. The Wallaces have served together in ministry since 1988, beginning at Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International, better known as CLFMI, in Ypsilanti, Michigan, under the leadership and training of Apostle Robert and Pastor Barbara Hill. The Wallaces' ministry services at CLFMI included working in the nursery, children's ministry, youth ministry, young adult ministry, the music ministry, the television ministry, and the co-founding of Power Incorporated and Genesis Christian Academy. The Wallaces have four cho adult children, Lauren, Linnea, Lydia, and John III. They also recently added two sons-in-laws to, to their family, Brian Wright and Nathan Hill, and a black Labrador retriever named Blue. Aligned with Matthew 6 and 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. Dr. Wallace's kingdom assignment is to make earth more like heaven. Hashtag here like there. He is a proud graduate of Head Start, earned his BA from the University of Chicago and MA and PhD degrees from the University of Michigan, all in sociology. Before I say this last piece, I will need to prepare my mint. Because there's going to be something I have to say that in respect and honor wait, of this man. Wait a minute, hold on. And no, no, I got the mic, sir. This is this is Christian Love. I'm the senior pastor. Have a seat, John. I'm gonna say this. Go blue. My friend, my brother, and mentor. John Wallace, pastor of Bible Center. Come on, can we give her on our feet and give him a hand? My brother. <laughs> I know Harold loved me, but I didn't know he loved me that much. You know, I got black male material forever, so to get the Ohio State Buckeye type to say go blue in public, that's a beautiful thing. But the blood of Jesus is thicker than a Buckeye shell. Come on, son. Wow. I actually believe this is the first time that I've spoken, spoken like preached at Christian Love Fellowship uh, since we left in 2004. So 
What a privilege, what an honor. I think when I was invited last, I was unable to attend. And so to be here today, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International is, is absolutely one of the greatest honors of my entire life. And so um, I, I brought the Kleenex because for whatever reason, my allergies are acting up today. I said my allergies are acting up today. And um, no, this, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, wow. Any, any uh, Lions fans here today? Got a couple. Of do, do, they, do they play today? What time? One o'clock? Okay, let me see the time. One o'clock. It's eleven thirty. Okay. I'll be done by one. So before we, we get into the word, um, we need to all stand to our feet. And we need to give applause and recognition and celebrate Pastor Barbara Hill. You say at the end, oh, I'm, I'm disrupting the service. You want to have words now? You want to have both? Later? Now? I can't. Okay, yeah. This thir 34 of those 40 years, I was here, and y'all ain't got to have me back, so I really don't care, so I'll disrupt. Yes, ma'am. To God be the glory for all the things he has done. To God be the glory for the things that he's going to do. And we are able to understand them. Because he's already done them. We just don't. We haven't caught up with him yet. Yes, but I honor the spirit of the memory of Robert Hill the founder, the visionary of this ministry. I honor him because through him, God allowed great things to happen. I honor this morning, <laughs> Pastor Wimberley, John and Cynthia Wallace. As I was trying to think what to say and what not to say, all I could think of was 40 years ago, my heart was not big enough to hold all of you all. But I think it praise God as I look out and I see you and I remember things that we've gone through, things that we've meant to each other, things that we have always said we will remember. As I think about those things, I can't help but say, to God be the glory. I remember, I remember the seven people that sat around the table that tried so very hard to come to a name of the ministry that Robert Hill had said that the Lord had called him 
to start, I could not believe it, you guys. But through time, I accepted it. And to God be the glory. I remember the time that we didn't have money. And Robert Hill had to fix cars. You know he could do anything. He had to put motors in people's cars to put food on the table for his family. I remember, I remember, I remember him having to go through the food stamp and get food stamps from the government to put food on the table for his family. But in all of those memory, guys, I remember God being good. I remember God being excellent to us. I remember God never failing. I remember God, hallelujah, being a God that could never, never let you down. So thank you, pastors, for allowing me to have words. Thank you, John, for being in the house today. I know you have a word. I need a word. I need a word. Me too. <laughs> so, when I get excited, I start coughing. I was in the store the other day and I, I was coughing. And the lady says to me, oh, that COPD is something else, isn't it? I said, I beg your pardon? She said it again. I said, I don't have COPD. She said, oh, I saw you with the oxygen. My husband has it. And she said, I said, well, I don't. They don't know what it is, you all. I don't know what it is. But until God does what he's going to do with it, I'm going to carry my oxygen. I'm going to carry my mask. And it's going to be all right. To God be the glory for what he has done and what he will do. Good morning, my friend. So also want to give honor to, of course, uh, my wife. And to Pastor Angela. See, you all don't understand. Amen. And unless you, you've been a pastor, you don't realize how hard this work is. And the worst job in this whole thing is to be the pastor's wife. It is. Because y'all talk about her. Y'all talk about us. We don't care. She cares when you talk about us. <laughs> and criticize and critique and all of that. And they're the ones that have to hear the dream, the vision, the people that we want to call bad words that we don't at least in public. And so I can't imagine what Pastor Barbara had to deal with for a decade to do this by herself. And critique is easy. Work is hard, even with somebody. And so to do this yourself, when this wasn't her dream, this wasn't her call, she was supporting her husband and to have to carry this thing then, and she wasn't alone, of course, but I'm sure she felt alone. She went home alone. And like I say, it's two, three in the morning, you up, you worrying, you concerned, and you have somebody to talk to, again, to keep you off of people. Y'all need to be thankful for Angie. Y'all don't know. <laughs> and Lord knows the folk in Pittsburgh should be thankful for my wife, because, you know, man, I can't imagine, if I wasn't saved, 
because I'm a mess saved. And oh God, if I drank, oh my God, I would just, oh, I would be a horrible person. Yeah, that's some book. Anyway, <laughs> I'd be a bad person. And so what my wife does and what Angie does and what Pastor Barbara did for 40 years, you have no idea, man. Whatever beef you have with people and differences of opinion and all that, until you've done it, as they say, until you walked in the moccasin. And so the ladies that are not behind this stuff, in front of it, beside of it, often the source of the ideas, as much of course, men get the credit, women do the work. <laughs> Listen, man, you need to appreciate these ladies. Got some weak amens, but it's all right. <laughs> and so I want to personally thank Pastor Barbara, Pastor Angela, Pastor Cynthia, because our start, so in 1980. Seven. I married a girl from Flint, Michigan. And three months thereafter, we moved from Chicago to a city that I could not pronounce. Right? Yips, what's the? Well, I was in Ann Arbor, so I didn't even try. But I met this guy named Richard Donlin at the computer laboratory at the University of Michigan. And he told me about this church. And he told me about the love. And the love was real, man. The love was real. And that love, a big portion of that love was because of Pastor Barbara Hill. And if nothing else, she loved Robert Hill, enabling him to love us. And she loved Robert Hill. And she lets you know that. And so we moved to uh, Ann Arbor and we started attending church at CLF, and the only challenge was, like, they start at noon, and 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 4.30, I mean, oh my God, the service <laughs> went forever. You know, you try to hint the pastor, like, hey, pastor, man, we have the best church in the world, but it's just a little long. He's like, whatever. And you would come back week after week, <laughs> month after month, year after year, because the love was so thick. And the opportunities that he would give you. You see, and, and Harold told my story, and I got, you know, a bunch of degrees and stuff, but the deepest training that I got was, and I think about this, we were like 22 years old, and we started serving and ministering. And like, the reason we didn't have children for three years was because of the time that we spent in the nursery. <laughs> Amen? That was birth control. Until we left the nursery, we didn't have no kids. I didn't want no kids. And then there was youth ministry. When my wife threatened those children, we went to Chicago. And they tried to make those kids go to bed at 10 o'clock. I said, that's a bad idea. They did that anyway. And 11 o'clock, you know, making the, making the rounds, knocking on the door, no answer. And so we leave the hotel crazy. And these little silly children from Ypsilanti on Michigan Avenue, I don't even know what we told their parents. On Michigan Avenue, Ebony was there. Look at, yeah, you're embarrassed. On Michigan Avenue, 11 o'clock at night, just as happy looking country as they want to be. Look at the big buildings, like robbed me. Unbelievable. And Cynthia was like, I will kill you all. <laughs> and there was the TV ministry. And there was so many other things and hours and hours of service and ministry. And at 29 years old, Pastor Hill gave this message and talked about the notion of being a self-sufficient community. And he painted this vision. And he would always say that everything we need is in the house. And we're not supposed to, don't have to depend on other people. Because everything that we need is in the house. Every gift, every talent, and ability. Now, it might have to be developed. It might have to be grown and have to be nurtured. But at 29 years old, how do you let a child, essentially, start a school? But my wife got on fire, and she heard that message. And he said, we need to educate our own children. At 29 years old, launched this idea for school, and then built this building, the Nehemiah Project. 
And you got jokers that don't know the, the, the claw from the handle of the hammer up on the roof. Just laughing, and it was snowing. And I remember a hammer sliding down, and Russell was up there, and who was it? Was it you? Somebody chased the hammer. The hammer is sliding down. You know, we don't call people fools. But the joker gonna jump on the roof about to slide down and die. And we had so much fun as a family, learning, and growing, and developing, and essentially as children, <laughs> being given responsibility and opportunity for growth. And it's so funny, when people, you know, people minister and they act like you're exploiting them, when you're actually giving them opportunity. I'm a university professor. The first thing I ever taught was young people at Christian Love Fellowship. I get paid to run my mouth. Power, we built businesses, all kind of stuff. I'll show you in a second. Based on the experiences that we had here at Christian Love Fellowship. And so, whatever stuff, and whatever drama, and whatever beef, and all that, we're family, man. We're family. And family beef, I get it. But at the end of the day, we're family. And so when this is all over, whatever we have with each other, we need to get that right. And this is definitely not what I came here to talk about, but Renee gave my message anyway, so I'm stalling a little bit. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and Pastor Barbara, listen, I have four children. My kids don't do everything the way I want them to do it. They don't do it the way they did. I got, I got men with earrings and everybody here and everybody got tattoos and all of this stuff. You know what I mean? But they're still my kids. And that's my DNA. <laughs> and I probably can't blame nobody but myself and their mama. And so, so Pastor Barbara, you got, some, you got some good kids, man. And you, you won't agree, and we don't. But in terms of the values and the love and the commitment and the love for this ministry that we got from y'all, from Pastor and you, it's there. It's there. And I'm sure he would be proud that because, listen, this thing didn't have to keep going. Pastor Barbara, I'm sure, can tell you stories, man. This thing was close. But the fact that we're still here, and that she held on to this thing, and that it's still happening, and it's growing, and as I look around and I see all of these faces, and I listened and talked about the 11 churches, do you realize the globe has been influenced by this ministry? The globe, thousands of people all over the country. The stuff that's happening, and I'll talk about it in a minute, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is because of the things that we learned here. Don't allow the enemy to destroy the vision, the mission, the history. What up, bro? Some people, you can tell even with a mask. Don't let the enemy destroy the legacy, the history, the intent of this ministry. Anyway. And so, before I'm about to do a new thing, context of this passage, Isaiah's sharing, and he's talking about how they had come through the Red Sea and how God had allowed the Egyptian army to be destroyed. But he says on the issue, he says, that's important, but, but don't spend your time focused on that. That was important. It's how we got us here. But can you imagine trying to go forward, looking in your rearview mirror? That's a recipe for something, isn't it? <laughs> and so it's important that we remember our past and that we understand that we're building on a legacy 
And so I remember so distinctly when I went back to Pittsburgh in 2004, and uh, we started doing all kind of work, and our, our, our church was literally a house. It was the same house that I had uh, grown up in as a child, and we started demoing stuff, and we threw out the benches. And anybody remember benches? We threw out the benches and, and brought a projector into the church. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, we, and my grandmother was... And you know, my grandmother was a good woman. She was quiet. She was a little bit quiet. She wasn't that quiet. She loved me. And I said to her one day, Grandma, I love you. And she said, I love you too, in spite of. This is my grandmother, man. Grandmothers ain't supposed to say stuff like that. I love you in spite of. And I was like, what do you mean, Grandma? So my, my uncle told me later that she felt like I was tearing up what, what daddy, that's what they call my grandfather, what daddy had done. And he explained to her, Mama, simply building on what Daddy had done. He says, it's almost like, you know, a woman, you come into a house, you want to decorate it the way you want to decorate it. You want to do what you want to do. And so don't see it as him tearing up, but rather adding and building, because that's true. If I take the foundation out of any building, what do you have? Rubble, <laughs> exactly. And so... What is happening today and what is going to happen in the future is building on the foundation that was laid. So let me move forward quickly. So, for I'm about to do a new thing. I'm doing something new. See, I've already begun, don't you see it? And so, before Pastor Bar Cynthia and I left 2004, um, Pastor Robert uh, pronounced a prophecy over us. And it's interesting how God works. I had been working on this paper. I've been studying the role of churches in community and economic development and how churches are supposed to be involved in the transformation of cities and communities and neighborhoods. And so I've done all this research on uh, churches in Detroit and churches in Chicago. And so I had a pretty good model and had written this paper. And what little did I know that this would become the blueprint for the work that God had called us to do in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And so when my grandfather died in 2003, I was studying, he died in February, I was studying doing my devotions, and in April of that year, God said, move back to Pittsburgh. That was the last thing on my agenda. And I remember having the conversation with Pastor, and he was like, what? Because it came out of nowhere, and I'm not the kind of person that says, well, God said, and all of that, but God spoke. You know, I call it your Gethsemane moment. When you know exactly what you're called to do, and you don't want to do it, you know, we sing all these songs about Jesus loved you so much, and if you were the only one in the world, he would have died and so forth. That's great, except the scripture says something different. On the eve of his death, Jesus was crying out to his father. It says the capillaries in his head broke, and he was bleeding, and blood coming down. And he says, Father, I don't want to do this. If Peter can do it, let him do it. If John can do it, let him do it. So this notion that Jesus was ran to the cross is mythology. The Bible says that Jesus wasn't interested. But he said, what, well, nevertheless. So some of you probably need to have that Gethsemane moment when you realize what God has called you to do, and you always have a choice. But it's that moment when you give up and you surrender your will to his. He said, nevertheless, Father, not my will but your will be done. And so that prophecy the pastor gave, he says, you are to change that wasteland into an oasis for the glory of our Lord. And he said, God is going to do a new thing in the ghetto. Now, why you call my hood the ghetto? I'm not sure. But anyway, God is going to do a new thing. And so I want to take you back to 2004 with me. And I want you to listen to the voice of Apostle Robert Hill. When he prophesied what was going to happen in the city of Pittsburgh, in the neighborhood of Homewood, when he released his spiritual son and daughter to go to a place that he had never been. But in the spirit, he saw the assignment, and he understood the work. And so I'm going to get out of this and uh, ask that they would show the video, please. Change that. 
And so every new member's class, I show that video. Every anniversary, we revisit the video. Every time that I want to scream and holler and choke somebody, I review the video. And I hear the prophecy and the call and the assignment of the Lord that came through Pastor Robert Hill and through this house. And so it is so critically important for all of us as we reflect, because the reality is without this ministry, we wouldn't be here, none of us. The only reason we're here, that God chose to use this ministry to bring us to this moment in time. You saw in, in, in the video on my right was my wife, on my left was my boys. My children's godparents are here. My best friends in the world are here. The people who, when I'm in a tight spot, come through for me, they're here. And so this place created those relationships and became the venue through which I could have and build those relationships. And so I want you to think about the importance and the value of the church. And it's not the building, because it's Listen, we heard the, the history. I remember Pastor Robert being up under the cars out on 623 Oak Street and, and being Meineke and Mr. Fix-It and all of that. And the building didn't matter. I remember being over here across the way. The building didn't matter. This is a beautiful place, but it's not the building. The church is the people. And so if push came to shove and the church had to be in a tent somewhere, it would still be the church. And so it's so important that we as the people of God, we reflect and remember that this church, this faith community has positioned us to be where we are today. And so in Bible Center, we call it, and if you recall, he started with, he called it, and he said, this place will be an oasis. And so our work, we call it the Oasis Project, the Community and Economic Development Division of Bible Center Church. An oasis, a place of peace or safety in the midst of difficulty. In our core scripture, Matthew 6 and 10, this is part of the Lord's Prayer. If you understand the scriptures, uh, the fundamental message of Jesus Christ was the kingdom of God. The fundamental mission of God was to establish the kingdom on earth. You remember in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26 and 28 through 28, he says, have dominion over the earth. Subdue it. Bring it under authority. And so God assigned to us as human beings the dominion over the earth. And so the earth was designed literally as a colony of heaven. A colony is simply a reflection of one place in another place. And so we have these states, what is it, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, so forth. We call that New England. Why? Because England sent folks to that country to make that place, England, in another land. Right now, anybody know what? There's 521 languages spoken in Nigeria, largest African country in the world. Does anybody know the official language of Nigeria? Any Nigerians in the house? No Nigerians? Okay. The official language of Nigeria is English. How can that be? 
Because why? They were colonized by England. They drink tea. They wear ties and shirts, and it's hot. But they experienced the culture of England because it was infused in that nation. And so we were supposed to bring the influence of the kingdom of God to the earth. And then Satan tricks our grandparents. We get jammed up. But then you fast forward. Look at Psalm 115, 16 when you get a chance. It says the earth, no, the Lord is, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he's given to the children of men. And so problems, challenge, difficulty on earth are a function of us because God said, the earth is y'all's. we like, where was God? God is like, where are you? I put you here to exercise dominion, to bring the authority of the kingdom of God, to make earth more like heaven. That is our corporate and individual kingdom assignment. And so this verse says what? We're praying. He says, he teaches them to pray. He says, here's what you should pray. Your kingdom come. And then he defines it. He says, what is it? It's simply your will being done on earth like it is in heaven. Do you realize our ultimate destination is not heaven, but earth? It says there will be a new heaven, a new earth that's going to come here. We will live all over again as citizens of the kingdom of God. That's what Paul tells us. We are citizens of the kingdom. We're not from here, but we are ambassadors. And ambassadors bring the influence of the country from which they come and infuse it. And they do business on behalf of the country where they've come from. And so, thank you, somebody gave me a preach. We're supposed, I know, I'm blowing your wig with it. We're supposed to make earth more like heaven, so your job should look more like heaven because you're there. Your school should look more like heaven because you're there. Your neighborhood should look more like heaven because why? A citizen of the kingdom lives in this place. And so let me just show you a little bit what happens in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. So our hashtags are earth like heaven, here like there. And so this is our, our logo. The B is for the Bible. The Bible, do you know the Bible is the constitution of the kingdom of God? Every country has a constitution. When you go to a new country, you have to learn how to live there. You have to learn how the rules work. You have to learn how the law. You have to learn what it means to be a citizen. Get a chance, look at when you become a citizen of the United States. They make you basically desecrate the country in which you're from. I abjure, I disavow, I'll never, I hate them people. And so becoming a citizen of the kingdom of God is the same thing. And the constitution of the kingdom, because we're, we've been influenced by the enemy, and so we don't know how to live life kingdomly. So he turns the whole thing upside down. Our natural inclination, somebody does something to us, we get even. He says, no, no, we turn the other cheek in the kingdom. He says, you don't have enough. You don't have enough give. We're like, what? Yeah, that's how he does. And so the kingdom flips our world upside down. So the scriptures is required for us to understand what it means. And so the little arrows, you see this? It's earth like heaven, here like there. And so the message of our our ministry is in the logo. And then Jeremiah 29 and 7, he says, listen. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city. Seek its shalom. And pray for it. Why? Because if it prospers... You too prosper. Seek the peace and prosperity of your school, the peace and prosperity of your job, the peace and prosperity of your neighborhood. Because why? If it prospers. Because if your neighborhood goes down, guess what? Now you got to have armed guards outside watching your cars. But if your neighborhood prospers, then you prosper. So when I moved back to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Y'all can play it again, but not right now. <laughs> Y'all re-watching? You, you're playing the video, the sound's playing. <laughs> so this is what was behind our church, i.e. the house, that I was the pastor of. And so when I went back to Pittsburgh and was driving around the chain, I literally cried. Because I left CLF, I left Ypsilanti, and this is what I came to. And this building was uh, across the street, and someone was living in this when I shot this picture. And this was there. And then today it looks like this. Looks a little bit like earth, more like heaven, huh? There's this playground now for the babies. Look a little bit earth like heaven, don't it? That garage that was sitting there is now this beautiful mural on it. Earth more like heaven. This building was behind us, so after our community day, you know community day, which means 
free clothes, hot dogs, and hamburgers. 2.30 in the morning, I get a call from the alarm company. The jokers had broken into the church and stole the hamburgers and hot dogs that we had not finished serving. 4.30, I got another call from the alarm company. Went back in the building, <laughs> trying to steal the stuff out of the sanctuary, the sound system, and so forth and so on. This is that space today. That active crack house is now this. This is the international corporate headquarters of Bible study. <laughs> this vacant and overgrown lot purchased the property, cleaned it up, and so now this is that. Beautiful mural. You have a large farm growing. We teach children about cooking. There's a bio shelter on the space. Inside the bio shelter, we have what's called an aquaponic system. I don't know if you know aquaponics, but there's fish inside, the waste from the fish, fertilize the plants, the plant cleans the water, send it back to the fish, and then we retail, that cell, the, 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 uh, the lettuce at our cafe. That's a little bit earth more like heaven. And then we also partner with five other urban farms and provide produce in our neighborhood from that farm that was that overgrown lot with that vacant house on it. And then we purchased this building in 2012 former Rite Aid, and what had happened was the manager was killed. They attempted to abduct him. He was taking the money to the bank. They attempted to abduct him. He didn't want to go with the program, so he was killed. The building was shuttered and was closed for over a decade. Bullet holes in the windows. We went to the Urban Redevelopment Authority with the aspiration to purchase the building. They said, no, we're not going to sell the building. We want to save it for, now meanwhile, the thing had been closed for over a decade. And so that same person who told me no, was the same joker. And so the question was, well, how are you going to pay for it? I said, cashier's check. <laughs> and so when we went in, however, <laughs> this is what that building looked like, right? And so we worship in aisle three, right next to the hamburgers and the hot dogs and the chicken. But during the pandemic, we created this idea called the neighborhood school. School strategy created to help optimize online learning. And so we juiced up the Wi-Fi and transformed our quote unquote sanctuary into a school for 54 babies from 18 different schools. And what happened was what that, I'm gonna tell you what didn't look like the kingdom. Mother was uh, talking to one of our staff and she has three babies and they're doing their homework on her, on her cell phone. That's not God's will being done on earth like it is in heaven. And so we bought tables, we bought chairs, we hired staff to help the young people. We juiced up the Wi-Fi, we bought iPads and computers. And so those babies that otherwise would not have had Wi-Fi, didn't have devices and so forth, couldn't get to school, wouldn't have gone to school, were able to spend their entire year with us. And this tool that we put together became the vehicle for which the entire county used to start these learning hubs. Earth more like heaven. Testing the temperature, doing the homework. And the babies, you've heard about the mental health crisis and the kids being home. So our babies were able to play outside and hang out with each other. And even though the year was a bit compromised, it was a much better experience than before. We also continued our after-school work and, and our programming for the kids. And so this is our most recent report. So we have the largest learning hub in the city of Pittsburgh. Our model is a, a model for funding the other ones in the county. We basically calculated what it would cost the parents to do what we did. So those parents, and most of our parents are, uh, what do they call them, uh, what's the workers? What do they call them? Huh? Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. Anyway, folks who had to go to work, I forget what you really call but folks who had to go to work. And so our job was to enable our parents to continue to earn while our kids were able to learn. We did the numbers, so essentially, over three quarters of a million dollars of value brought back to our family so their children would eat two, perhaps three meals with us at a day. They could have education. And when the parents got home, the homework was done, it was submitted, and they could spend time, quality time with their children before they go back to work. Amen. 58,000 hours of programming, 19,264 meals sold, almost 12,000 meals served, almost 12,000 miles driven to pick the babies up. And then during the pandemic, we also converted our sanctuary into a food distribution hub. And between April 16, 2020, and we just finished the beginning of uh, September, 212, 323,000 meals delivered. 3,500 learning hub meals, 77,400 produce boxes distributed, 62,125 diapers delivered. 
That's earth more like heaven. Here like there. This building had been the original post office in Homewood. More recently, it was enclosed and it was a church and then it was vacant for about five or six years. And today it's Everyday Cafe. Amen. This building, two people were killed, four people were injured. This building, one of those two buildings I just showed you, uh, somebody had broken into the church office, stolen the computer, sitting outside the building. I'm looking and I say, man, I look like my church computer. I say, hey, bro, I, I want to buy that computer from you. Does it work? Oh, yeah, man. I say, plug it in for me. He plugs the thing in and says, Bible Center Church. I called the police commander, who at that time was a member of the church. I said, there's about to be a homicide on Homewood Avenue. I need you to come right away. I did. I took my computer, too. <laughs> that space is now this space. The University of Pittsburgh leases from us. A six and a half million dollar investment on Homewood Avenue in the hood that the university uses for programming and activity. That's earth more like heaven. And, and wait, on top of that, we have the cleaning contract to do our own building, and I have an office in the building, and get paid to clean the building, and they did the renovations, and they pay us rent. That's the kingdom. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> this building, formerly known as the Purple Building, we prayed, we fasted, we touched it. This is the lower level of that building, the basement. This is that same basement today. Let me show you this again. You see this? And this is where, literally where those two people were killed. But God redeems, you see, earth more like heaven is your kingdom come. Your will be done. And so the enemy's work was defeated. This place was a place of death and destruction. This is it today. Your kingdom come, your will be done. The other half of that building is, will be, uh, in a few months, on our own business development center where we do entrepreneurship education, business consulting, we'll use a co-working space, et cetera. This space outside of our uh, worship center, uh, you see the syringes, you see the broken down concrete. This is an aerial shot of the ground mural that it occupies today, and here are the babies. The same space, redeemed from the enemy. You know, and I was listening to Pastor Anita, I'm like, you know, and, and every gun, every, every knife, I'm like, whoa, Pastor, I don't want all that going on. But God is able to protect, and we're able to fight with the enemy, and we win. Now, do we have to deal with the enemy every day, all day? Of course we do. We ain't no fight. But we're citizens of the kingdom. We got backup. We pray. And he releases his angels, and we can be victorious. Come on. This is the lower level of that building. Uh, two years ago, this is it today, Oasis Community Kitchen, where we work with food-based entrepreneurs. We have 11 clients who now uh, can legalize their businesses, coming out their home kitchen, and actually have a full commercial kitchen, license, heart department of human services, and we provide them time to be able to build their businesses in the hood. And then, of course, the space outside of it, this is our multi-use space that we can then lease for activities and programs, et cetera. And this is the whole shebang, the clubhouse, Oasis Farm and Fishery, Everyday Cafe, Oasis Transportation Company, Oasis Property Management Maintenance, Own Our Own, and Oasis Kitchen. And you remember Pastor said, the whole city will be impressed. And so this article talks about bringing business back to a blighted neighborhood. And of the seven things that they mentioned, five of them belong to Bible Center Church. with 130 members, and that's counting the kids. In post-pandemic, I have no idea how many we have. Well, it ain't post, but you know, you understand what I'm saying, brother. Some of them here, some of them ain't, some of them disappear, some of them don't go to church, I don't know where they at. Maybe they, they done join uh, Transformation or wherever everybody else is, all right. And then most recently, not just impacting our city, but Pastor Cynthia won a $50,000 award from the American Heart Association, a national competition $50,000 to support entrepreneurs in the food space. Who does? You see what I'm saying? Little church in the hood, H. Little church in the hood. Not just impacting the city, but our nation. And then I remember, I go back to 2000 and whenever we moved, but I remember the tent being outside. And I remember pastor saying, there's a new sheriff in town. 
And we're back in the community where we started to transform this community for the kingdom of God. And in 1990, I had met this guy, big guy, worked in juvenile detention. It was myself and Herschel and Kevin, and we went to juvenile detention, and we did this thing called Men of Distinction, and we were working with those young men. And this guy was not saved at all. Not even a little bit. And, you know, he thought that because he was from Cleveland, somebody was scared of him. I'm from the hood, man. I'm from Homewood. <laughs> and so we would go toe to toe. But I showed this guy the love that I had received from the church that held service way too long. <laughs> and his first opportunity to preach was talking about the work and how he wanted help in juvie. And eventually, this young man got saved, show sure enough. And that same ferocity that he had in the street, and that same passion for the community, is the same passion that he has today. And so this message of coming back to this community and transforming it for the kingdom of God, that resonated with him. And that became his mission, and he actually became a preacher, an evangelist. He had black hair and was about 40 pounds lighter, too. And and we ain't, look at young Monica. <laughs> and she looking like, what is wrong with this dude? <laughs> and so he started Stomp and the youth ministry and balling on the boulevard and all these sorts of things and bringing the police and the kids together. Who does that? <laughs> and as was said earlier, he's by vocation. I mean, he got two jobs, y'all, at least two jobs. And pastoring is hard enough. But when you add on another job and other responsibility, and here's the thing, you as a Christ follower as a kingdom builder, you can't even be a slouch at your job either. And so he's nationally recognized for his work in Ann Arbor Public School. And your pastor does the pastor thing, and he loves you. That same love that lived in Robert Hill and Barbara Hill, that same love that's passed through him, passed through me. And then God called him the pastor, and so in... 2019, when Pastor Barbara retired, had the opportunity to come here and something that most people would have never believed. Did this joker, the drug dealer, the, I ain't gonna say no while stop. <laughs> whoa, whoa, my bad. And I had the opportunity to sit on this step and right here and talk to him about what it meant to pastor. And basically every Sunday we talk to each other and we keep each other from hurting our respective congregation. Y'all should appreciate me too, low key. <laughs> and so, six months into pastoring, the most difficult period in the history of our nation, the governor of Michigan, like most others, shut stuff down. And I can't imagine being a new pastor, just trying to figure it out. I mean, the size of the ministry, the real estate, the people, all this. I can't imagine being in that role. Six months into the job, the whole thing shuts down. And what do you do? Where are the people? Are they being cared for? And so on and so on. God, you see, however, is showing something new. And it's not just here. This is globally. Listen, church as we knew it is not going back. Nobody has lived through this before. No ministry knows how to do this work. It's all trial and error and a whole lot of prayer. Anybody remember cell phone Sunday? <laughs> Greg remember, don't he? <laughs> right, the little piece of paper. Welcome to Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International. Flip the paper over where our pastor is. Cell phone Sunday, four, five, six people in the room talking to each other in a phone. I remember it too. But while that was happening, Kids Powerhouse and Stomp still went on. When Mom Crawford passed, the family was still mobilized to go take care of her. When none of us could gather physically, those phone calls were made to check on folk, to let them know that we love you, to let them know that he loved you. Figuring out how to get classes online. Google Meet and Zoom and you on mute, you on mute. Turn on the camera, touch the little button. 
Can you hear me now? Why is somebody calling me on Sunday morning? CLF Missions Ministry, still going in the midst of the pandemic. Six months into your ministry, trying to figure all this stuff out, overwhelmed with your own family, trying to make this thing work at school, at work, all of this stuff. The marriage ministry still going on. CLF stepped up doing kingdom work. Harold and Angie still talking with the kids, women's ministry, Black History Month. Listen, figuring out how to keep money coming in when they're, listen, all of a sudden, that past the basket thing was over. But guess, y'all see these new lights y'all got? These LEDs and fan spinning and heat and flush the toilet and all that stuff. Guess what? Churches have bills too. They didn't know this, Pastor Barbara. They think the Lord provides. Listen, churches have bills. Crazy. Light, heat, gas. All kind of stuff. And so figuring out how to keep that stuff happening and figuring out how to get online and Venmo and Cash App and Tidly and Man, listen, day one, we mailed envelopes to every member of our church, stamped envelopes too. <laughs> we got you. You need me to come pick it up? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, Sister Sally? <laughs> and in the midst of the pandemic, beautified the property. This is a, a drone shot, an aerial of your property. It's unbelievable. And you see, the reason I'm raising all of this the head start that y'all have on us because of Pastor Robert and Barbara Hill. I mean, you got this big old building, you got another building over here. And so the stuff that God has enabled us to do over eight, don't be impressed, that's 18 years worth of work. And just like Instagram, I ain't show y'all my failures. The stuff that didn't work, don't get it twisted. You see what I'm saying? I ain't telling all of that on, and you know, people watching, you know what I mean? I'm gonna be like, all I do is win. We are here advancing the kingdom, y'all. And tell y'all about that letter that I got from the magistrate because the property we had, jokers keep breaking into and so jokers could get hurt and they trying to take me to jail. I ain't telling that part. <laughs> or the building we spent like 50K on and had the demo because the roof caved. I ain't telling that part. Or when we came in and jokers tried to steal the, uh, the water meter, and turn on the water and water squirting everywhere. I ain't telling about that part. <laughs> or the office got broke into, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't telling all of that. All I do is win for the kingdom. And then next door you have this beautiful space and it's renovated and preparing it to be able to let the community use it in the church as well. And then listen, as religious attendance in Michigan decreases, churches close. This is April 2021. Do you realize churches are closing all over the nation? Shutting down, locking doors. But in the midst of the pandemic, Christian Love Fellowship continues to thrive, continues to be able to put new lights in, continues to be able to have heat and light and gas, continues to be able to minister without begging people and, please, kind sir, can we get an extension and all this foolishness. And the newspaper recognized, in this town, in the midst of the pandemic, this boy says, let's bring the church to the community. And so I'll real quick run through the stuff that Renee did a much better job. So y'all started a program with Ann Arbor School to get people GEDs, getting education, leading the, the encouragement of people to get vaccinated or at least stay masked up. Monthly food distribution. You see, you got to go basic needs. When you're serving communities like ours, Maslow's hierarchy, right? We're talking about food, people. We're talking about real basic stuff. Before the pandemic, over 40% of the people in our neighborhood were food insecure, had food access issues. And I suspect that the community around us is the same way. And so working with food gatherers, giving the church, and you know they don't give grants to church. That's right. right? They, don't give, they don't give no money to churches. <laughs> Millions of dollars. Like, they, don't, they don't do that. And so the ability to feed people. And see, here's what's true. People may not get saved the next day. Do you realize Jesus fed 4,000 people one day, 5,000 people the next? They didn't all get saved. 
You see what I'm saying? Some of us feel like, well, if they, you know, everybody's like a, a potential victim. And I'm going to get them to say, listen, he served irrespective. He died on the cross for people who never acknowledged him. <laughs> Cast out demons, raised people from the dead. And listen, the, Jesus was a failure at the end of his ministry. There were only 120 people in the room. All the fa- John says, listen, if everything that Jesus did was written down, all the books in the world wouldn't hold it. His boys ran from him. His boy Peter was cursed. Jesus, I don't know no Jesus. He was by himself. His mama, his auntie, his boy John is the only ones left at the foot of the cross. But you fast forward today and Christianity is the largest world religion in the world. Because why? The power of his love. And so we serve people irrespective of whether they come, because when they get ready, <laughs> the church that will be on top of mine will be the one that gave me food when I was struggling. The one who helped me get a GED so I could get a job. You know, the one who gave my baby some diapers, the one that took me in, the one, that person who put their arms around me when I didn't smell real good. The one who didn't look at me funny, who allowed me to come into that beautiful building and didn't act crazy, didn't look at me like I smelled even though I did pantry, people waiting in line for the Thanksgiving meals. Here go my baby, Tamika. <laughs> my spiritual daughter, taking meals to those essential workers, the nurses, the firemen, the police officers. Even though we're at distance, the trunk or treat for the babies. Why are we getting shots about everything? We do the flu too. Why not use this big old parking lot? Christmas, baby, people not having jobs, not being able to provide for their kids, but they could come here and receive toys for the children, and the parents got to be the hero. See, I don't like programs when you take the role of the parents, so the kids come in and the parents are left to the side. But let the parents be the hero. Let them get the toys and give them to their own children. And so when they get ready to come to church, when they get ready to find the church, you see, I remember that church, that during Christmas when I had nothing, they gave me something so my babies would have something for Christmas. People in the space. Backpacks, back to school, here we go again. Masked up. Enabling my kid to go back to school. Not the little raggedy backpacks either. Them good ones like people buy for their own children. And as recent as yesterday, the gathering of our people celebrated 40 years of ministry in this community, restoring community, back to the vision that I heard, that set me on fire, that framed our being here. And I remember another message, Pastor Always Peace, find your place in the vision. He talked about Caleb and how Caleb was one of the two, two of the twelve, when they went into the goal in the promised land, they spied it out, and the ten of them were like, we can't do it, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're like grasshoppers in the eyes, there's giants there, the Anakim is there. But Joshua and Caleb, they said, we can do this. Our God is able. But the people were afraid. And they listened to them other 10 jokers. Fast forward 40 years. The fire was still alive. Caleb had found his place in the vision. And so he said to Joshua, hey, bro, you remember 40 years ago when we passed this place? And Moses said to me, you can have that. He says, I'm as strong as I was then. He says he was 80 years old, but the vision kept him young. And the fire was in his belly. He said, listen, bro, give me my mountain. And so pastor taught us, what's your place in the vision? If Christian Love Fellowship is your church, if you're supposed to be here, be here. And then what is your place in the vision? What is the unique way that God created you and shaped you and made you to serve? And see it as a privilege and an honor. You don't got to serve, you get to serve. What an honor to serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It's not about him. It's not about Angie. It's not even about Pastor Robert or Pastor Barbara. We were taught that we serve the King. The king of kings, the Lord of lords. And so as I wrap it up, 
You ask this guy. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> the word. Of course, there's work in the house, but we work it. It's like practice in football. The goal ain't practice. <laughs> the game is out there. And so there are people today who don't yet know Jesus. And so, man, if people come back or they don't. Because I, I ain't going to lie. Listen, we started, we were recording, pre-recording on Saturdays. So by Saturday at noon, we were done. And I discovered Sunday. Yeah, okay, y'all know Sunday. I didn't know Sunday. I'm a pastor. I had never seen Sunday before in my life. There's a day of the week where people don't do nothing or they get to do what they want to do. It's the And I was done by Saturday afternoon. So I discovered Saturday afternoon, too. And then we had waffles and sausage and bacon and quiche. It, it was unbelievable on Sunday. Legs up, propped up, eating, commenting on my son. Preach, boy, you better preach. And don't nobody say nothing. You better preach, boy. And I'm watching myself. And I was like, this is the most beautiful thing in the world. And I got comfortable. I like it. I love to become Jewish. Listen, we need a Sabbath. We ain't doing no work. And God was like, uh, son, you're the pastor. You got to go back. I was like, oh, okay. And so listen, some people back, some people online, some people offline. But listen, let's be honest. When you were at the house, you checking your phone, right? You putting your cream in your coffee. Coffee ain't hot. You go make another cup. You're like, I never did like that song, so you don't even care. You missed that song, right? They tell you, even those of you at home, stand with us. You ain't standing. You sitting there with your legs crossed, feet propped up, chilling. And let's be clear, things slow down. I'll be honest, I got three, four devices. I done been to Transformation. I done checked out Furtick. I done seen Jake's. Jake's got that big old screen with all them people on the back. It's dope, right? But listen, guess what? Get sick if you want to. Go ahead, call my man Michael Todd. Uh, Pastor Todd, I'm sick. <laughs> what? <laughs> First of all, he don't care. Don't know. He ain't following you back. Somebody, he does a little of his own social media, but other people doing it for you. Joel ain't coming. TD ain't coming. Listen, when my mother-in-law had a heart attack on an airplane, and they took her to the hospital in, what was it, Romulus, I believe? I don't even know where it was. And she was dying. And my wife and I are sitting there crying. It was snowing and it was cold. And Robert and Barbara Hill walked in. Why? Because they were a pastor. And so you do what you want to do. No matter, these are your people, I really Do what you want to do, but listen, if you're going to be a part of a church and you want a pastor, you have some good ones. Because pastoring was modeled for them. And you don't have to agree with everything. Guess, surprise, they don't agree with you either on everything, but it's okay. We're family. And so let's go out there. And then finally, y'all pray for Angie. You see her, she's like, Lord, help me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, do the altar call, man. I'm out of here. God bless y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> wow, that was so good. <laughs> Pastor Wallace, that was beautiful. And what best way to celebrate our 40th anniversary. That was awesome. I truly enjoyed that because there was a lot of things that you shared that I didn't know and I'm sure most of us didn't. And Pastor Barb, it's so good to see you. I didn't see you at first. <laughs> Forgive me when I was up here, but I thank the Lord. That was just wonderful. And listening to um, Pastor Wallace, this is a time now I'm not going to prolong the service because we've heard it all. And I know that your hearts was enlightened as well as your spirits lifted because mine was but I do want to say right now 
as he said before, if you want to be a part of this ministry, or if you just want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is the time to do it. This is the time. Don't question what the Lord has placed on your heart. Sometimes we can talk ourselves out of things. But if you don't have a church home, if you don't know the Lord and you want to know the Lord, this is the time. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. Or let's say this pandemic has really been hard on you. It has hit you like a bomb. You haven't been able to feel the spirit of the Lord. Your prayer life has decreased. You haven't been able to get in the word of God. You haven't as Pastor Wallace said, open up your phone or your iPad or your computer, but you feel distance. This is the time to come because that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with your relationship with God. We're here if you want prayer. We have people that are here that would intercede and pray with you as well as for you. And maybe you don't want to be a part of here, but you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior because you might live in a different city. Just raise your hand. We'll intercede and we'll pray with you. Our church door here at Christian Love Fellowship International Ministries is always open. Always. And sometimes I tell my children, I'm just a phone call away. We're just a phone call away. Because that's what serving God and establishing your relationship, God, you have to get connected with other people who are serving the Lord. We had a great fellowship yesterday. A great time together. We were talking and interacting hugging one another. That's what we need. And that's what the enemy tried to destroy with the pandemic, but he couldn't because God set priorities for us in place. So reestablishing took place for us in 2020. I don't know about you, but it did for some, for some of us. It made us realize how important our families were to us, and it wasn't about getting up going to work. He reestablished us and reset priorities for us because we were out of control. That's what I say. Sometimes we were thinking our jobs were more important than raising our children. Sometimes because we got off of work late and we're tired, we would stay home instead of taking that shower and get dressed and getting to church. This is the time. Bow your heads with me if you will. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so good to us. We thank you for this appointed time, Lord, that we're all here, even those that are online and even those that are on Facebook. Whatever way they are connected, Lord God, I ask you to touch their hearts and their minds right now, Lord Jesus. Let them recommit unto you, Lord God to reestablish themselves unto you because as Pastor Wallace said, there is so much work to be done. Dreams that have been crushed, may they still, Lord Jesus, go forth. Gifts that you've given to your people, may they, Lord God, be enlightened and begin to walk in those gifts. Draw your people, Lord God, closer and closer to you that we will be the children of God that you called us to be. We thank you, Lord God, for every gift, every talent. We thank you for your gifts of administration. We thank you for every soul, every person that is here, every person that is online, those that we know and don't know. We thank you, Lord God, because they, Lord God, are listening today. They, Lord God, are recommitting to you today. They are worshiping you today, loving on you today. Lord, touch them in a special way that those that are asleep would wake up. That we, Lord God, would we establish ourselves and do what you would have us to do. No more doubting, no more questioning, but we would line up 
and hear your voice and be obedient to what you would have us to do. Lord, we need you. And we thank you. We thank you for what, you're, what you've already done, what you're doing right now, and what you're going to do. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. Because, Lord, you are going to do a great work. We ask you to continue to bless Pastor Barb. Keep your arms around her, Lord. Bless her in good health. Restore her, Lord Jesus. Keep her like never before, Lord God. And Lord, may her heart continue with the ministry that was established here. What her and Pastor Hill have, have done. Lord, continue to give her direction, Lord God. Lord, bless our pastor, Pastor Angie and Pastor Harold. Continue to keep your arms around them, Lord God, as you continue to enlighten and give them vision for what more needs to be done. And continue to bless Pastor and Sister Wallace, Lord, in a special way. Keep them, Lord God. We thank you that they traveled and they were here to give us and remind us we thank you for that word. Keep your arms around the work that they're doing, Lord God. Continue to build them up. There's more work that they are working on now and are going to do. May it all be a blessing. May you continue to move in a mighty way. We pray in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is good and he is moving all the time. And now we're going to go into a part of service that all of us can participate and we're going to go into the service of giving. Give the Lord a hand clap. Of giving. Your blessings come from giving. Amen. Amen. So you that are online, there are different ways that you can give. I like, I like the online giving. I don't know about y'all. I don't wait till Sunday service. Because when I get my check, I just send it on in. Cash app. And how to do Cash App is the dollar sign. It's our address, 1601 CLFMI. You can do Venmo. I didn't even know how to do Venmo. My grandson said, Nana, I sent you $20. So what you sent me $20 for? He said, because I was just thinking about you and I got paid and I sent you $20 on Venmo. I don't have Venmo. Oh, I'll be over. He came all the way to my house and set up Venmo on my thing. I said, whoa, I got Venmo now. <laughs> But it was just thoughtful that he sent us twenty dollars. I said that was really nice. Well, when we it, when you took me, I took him to go get his shot, and I took him to um, uh, what's that place they have good shakes, and I paid for our lunch. And he was saying, since you don't ever have time, and I be in school now, so he sent me twenty dollars, and I thought that was nice. You also can pay pay your tithe with tithe Lee T I T H E dot l y and you can always do it the old way when 2020 when COVID hit i mailed mine in until i got really good at other things but you can always mail it right here into the church amen there's different ways that you can pay your tithe give an offering make a donation do whatever the Lord places on your heart. Amen. I'm, I'm just giving people time to do this. Amen. Now we also want to do something else that's really special. Amen. But I need some trustees and someone who can um, have um, the offering. Amen. I need two trustees to come up so that we can give a special, a special offering as well on today. But wasn't the word good today? I don't know, but it was just good and enlightened. And I loved all of that that he shared with us because it's easily to forget where you come from. It's easily to forget. And to be reminded is a good thing. Now as 
our trustees come up and I know that he probably don't want this to take place today but I'm going to ask everybody today for a special offering for our pastor, Pastor Harold. I know he's shaking his head because he's thinking, oh, why did she, why is she doing this? But let me just say this. In the scriptures that um, what was read today about Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, when it says, I'm doing a new thing, it also says, now. Now. I was bring up. Don't you see it now? Let's stop. Let's stop waiting for tomorrow or waiting for yesterday or when things just get better. Let's do what we're called to do now. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. We have ushers who will give you an envelope. Amen, amen. If you're going to write a check, these are yours. If you're going to write a check, make the check out to Pastor Harold Wimberly. Amen. And we're just going to ask you to stand at this time. We're going to ask our ushers to lead the people around so they can give their special offering. There's a blessing when we're blessing someone else and as we give. And I know some of you may be giving your last. Or you may be giving out of some another bill or something else. But God will bless you for blessing someone else. Amen. We want to say thank you, Pastor Harold. Thank you, Pastor Angie, for your second year of pastoring. Amen. And what I like, they didn't even think about all the stuff they've been doing since they've been in this position here. Because I know Pastor Bob didn't think about all that stuff that you were bringing out to us today. It was wonderful. trustees. I thank God for, for all of you, for all of us being here. I cannot think of another thing that needs to be said today. <laughs> it has been a beautiful service. I'm so happy to be here. Um, God's best blessings to all of you and especially Pastor um, Harold and Pastor Angela on this special day. May God continue to bless you. Amen. She's always so sweet and pleasant. Amen. Pastor Amy. Thank you. God bless you. Amen.
I just want to say a few words. I have been here at Christian Love Fellowship since I was 18 years old. Wow. 18. I grew up in this ministry under Apostle Hill and Pastor Barbara. Learned so much and served since I have been here. And I thank God for my mother, who was just a servant at heart, who taught me how to serve and not to sit. And I just thank God for the guidance and the love of Apostle and Pastor Barbara Hill. And Pastor Barbara, I just want to give you this orchid. Amen. I want you, every time to look at you, remind you of us and how much we love you. How much we love you and how much we love you. Amen. Amen. Just share with you all let's try to stay connected I'm going to briefly just say we all on Wednesdays we have Bible class at noon time and we also have Bible class at 7 p.m. Um, on Wednesdays we also have um, on Sunday mornings we always have our Sunday morning sessions at 9 a.m. Um, you all we you can easily go on CLFMI church and click us on if you want to do it online it's very simple to do um, if not, send us your um, email, and you'll also get it by email so you can connect with Bible class. Remember to continue to pray for those on our prayer list. We get a notice, a newsletter from Sister Jennifer, which has been a blessing. She keeps us all connected every month, monthly, sharing. We appreciate you doing that, Jennifer. Please continue to stay connected that way. We want to acknowledge and say happy birthday to all those who had September birthdays. And we like to say happy anniversary to all of you who have had wedding anniversaries. Um, we just want to stay connected because when you're connected to one another, remember to hold up one another in prayer, intercede for them if they cross your mind. Remember that we are family. And we need to reach out to one another pick up the phone and call someone and just say I'm thinking about you. Amen. God is good. And one more time, I just want to thank Pastor. We appreciate both of you coming and being with us. Pastor and Pastor Bob. Amen. Give them another hand clap. Now we're going to, um, if you don't, you have anything else you want to say, Pastor? So if I can have everybody please stand, we're going to dismiss. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone here, for everybody that puts their hands to the work, for everyone that prays throughout the day, for everyone that speaks words of encouragement, for everybody here that loves the work of the Lord. I want to say thank you. I want to say truly I thank you. Be, me and my wife, Pastor Angie, we really thank you all. And for the other, my brother and my sister, John and Cynthia, who has been with us from day one. I want to say I appreciate you today. More than you know. And Cynthia, <laughs> it's such an honor to have you guys in our home. It's been amazing. And I miss it, you know. But every time we talk, we talk like we've been seeing each other day after day. So I want to say I appreciate you. I appreciate you for the discipleship, for, for knocking me upside the head when I needed to knock. And for listening to me when I need somebody to listen to me. You have stood in the gap. You have done the work with Cynthia and the family. I want to say I appreciate you. I appreciate what you've done, the stuff you poured into me, and what you continue to do. Yeah, I still go, I still find myself as this man being the person who's discipled. Now it's an honor to be discipled in a position where you have, where you're caring for other people and leading other people. And it's good to have someone to talk to, good to have someone to turn to. Pastor Barb, thank you for all the work that you've done and continue this ministry on through. Even in your time of grieving, you, you carried it through. So thank you. And thank you. And 
And so with that said, we got work to do. And it doesn't end till God calls it done. And so we will continue to do the work we're called to do. We're going to continue serving the body in-house and out of the house. And we're going to grow in relationship with one another. And I do ask that you please, for your sake, please tap into what God has called you to do and do it. Because if you don't, it's only one word for that, disobedience. And you can't be honored by the Lord being disobedient. Amen? Amen. I love you all. Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what such an awesome day of worship. Thank you for families and people coming together today. Thank you for the word that was delivered. Thank you for the reminder in that word. Thank you, Father, for this. Lord, your people, Father. And we give you glory and honor. And I pray that as my brother and sister travel back and as you all travel back to your destination, I pray that the Lord will continue to guide and direct you. Jesus is not just a Sunday thing. He is a lifestyle. Amen. And so we give you praise, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. We are having a walkthrough reception. Uh, it's going to be outside. So you guys, please uh, grab some things. We have it already boxed up for you. So just grab it and take it with you. We love you. Amen.